you. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. Your eyes saw my unformed body. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever.
grace and mercy and peace are yours from God our Heavenly Father, through his Son, the Son that we're waiting for, the one that we're anxiously anticipating this Advent season, the one that we will be reminded of this evening and tomorrow at Christmas. Agree or disagree with this statement? It's better to give than to receive.
It always begins with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Most highly favored maiden is a hymn that we sometimes sing when we sing the angel Gabriel from heaven came. She was a most highly favored lady. Again, a girl probably in her young teenage years, which was not out of the ordinary back in the first century times, Jesus times. A, 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 a virgin. And, 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 and Gabriel makes a point of that. Isaiah makes a point of that. Mary makes a point of that. No different than any other girl <coughs> of her age of that particular time. She didn't pray more than other people. She didn't come to worship more than other people. She didn't sin less than other people. She didn't give off a glow. She didn't have a halo circling around her head. She was no different than anybody that was similar age and gender. Then why, out of all the young teenage virgins in Judea, did God come to Mary and choose her to be the mother of God himself? God was going to put into motion his salvation plan here. It's been in existence for thousands of years, but now he's going to really put it into motion by sending that son, the son that was going to crush the devil's head. God was about to come in, but God needed a vehicle for his son to enter into this world. Because Jesus was going to be born like you and me. So why was Mary chosen? Must have been because she was better than other people, right? She must have been more faithful to God. She must have had a greater faith than other people. Something about her caused God to choose her more than anybody else. If that were the case, then grace is not grace. We learned in catechism class years ago that grace is God's undeserved love for sinners. Undeserved. Not deserved love, not because we are better than other people, but it's undeserved. It comes to us from God for no earthly reason, especially not because we've deserved it. And that was the case for Mary, Jesus, as Jesus' mother as well. When, when, when Gabriel called Mary, you are highly favored. She, that could have been translated, you are highly graced. It doesn't sound as nice, but, but you are highly graced. Mary was highly graced. She was highly undeserved love. She had been shown a particular amount of God's undeserved love, not because she was better than others, not because she was happier than others, not because she had a, a more cheerful disposition than other ladies, not because she was better than any other woman that God could find. No, he simply says, you have my grace. I just chose you. Now, Martin Luther said that one of the miracles of Christmas, and we're going to focus on that tonight at the candlelight service, was the fact that Mary believed this announcement from Gabriel. She didn't understand what Gabriel was telling her. She could not understand. She could not comprehend how she, never been with a man, was a virgin and was going to give birth to a child. But Gabriel explained that part, that, that baby that was going to be growing within her was going to be conceived by the Holy Spirit. And oh, by the way, no word from God will ever fail, Gabriel says. We used to learn that nothing is impossible with God. The new translations of the Bible say no word from God can ever fail. That's a more literal translation. We might like the fact that nothing is impossible with God, but no word from God can ever fail. In other words, again, when God says something, he's going to do it in the way that he says it. Mary still probably didn't understand everything that Gabriel was trying to tell her, but she was willing to receive it by faith. And that's why it's better to receive than to give when it comes to Christmas time. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. That's on the bulletin cover. May your word be to me fulfilled. Again, previous versions, let it be. Kind of like the Beatles song, let it be. That's a different translation. But may your word to me be fulfilled. 
That means Mary trusted with every fiber of her being that if God said it, if it was God's word, then it was going to be fulfilled to her. She was really, she was willing to receive this gift from God as her Savior as much as she was willing to receive it for the Savior of the whole world. Because she knew that it was her sins that this boy was going to carry as well as the sins of the whole world. Christmas is for receiving. It was for Mary. But it's also receiving for us. You know, it's hard to accept a, a, a gift graciously. How many times have you had been put in that awkward position of somebody does something nice for you, somebody gives something generous to you, and, and then you, you really don't know the words to say you're kind of trying to come up with some words, but it's an awkward situation. You're, you're grateful for what that has been given, but we just don't do a very good job of showing that. And, and you can see that in, in thousands of, of conversations that go on every single day. It doesn't matter if we've fallen on hard times. It doesn't matter if we are sick. If someone does something for us, we respond by saying, oh, why did you do that? You shouldn't have. You didn't need to do that. You know what? Next time you come, I will buy lunch for you, and then we'll be even. We're just not good at receiving things. Children are better at receiving things, but adults, we get to that certain age cutoff again, and we're not very good at receiving. We don't need anybody's charity. That's what we're taught. We don't need anybody else's help. We got two feet. We can stand on those two feet. I can do it by myself. I can help myself. Even if I'm in a lot of trouble, I can do it for myself. We hear the quote from Jesus, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And that is so true for many people. It's also more easier, much more easier to give than to receive. But unless you are ready on this Christmas time to receive the gift of Jesus, you're not ready for Christmas. We, we need some more Advent. We need to be ready, be taught, to be reminded once again how to receive a gift properly from God. Otherwise, you're not going to benefit from it. Because we can go and try to turn that definition of grace upside down. And we can say, well, but grace has to mean something. I, I, I have to have done something. I have to have been a decent person. I, I must have to work a little bit for God must see at least a little spark in me somewhere down deep that caused him to say, I love you. And I sent my son for you. But unless we are ready to give up any thought of pain or earning, or deserving God's grace or love, not only are we not ready for Christmas, but we will never receive any of the benefits that Christmas brings. God's Son coming into this world, God does not operate on Santa's principle. Naughty, nice, naughty, nice, decent. He kind of falls in between. He's been good, he's been bad, she's been really, really good, but she's been really, really good. Bad. That's not how God operates in the world that we live in. Christmas is all about God's love, God's undeserved love, God's grace, giving to us, and us opening our hands, and that's, again, not even something that we do. We receive. Our hands are given this gift of Jesus. That's grace. That's the grace that Paul was talking about in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 when he said this, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. If Christmas is going to do anything for you this year again, go back a couple of years. Go back to when you were sitting around that Christmas tree and you were looking for to have that gift with your name on it given to you. Revert back to the years of your childhood when it's all about receiving presents and gratefully receiving those presents. 
when it comes to the grateful gifts of Christmas and forgiveness and grace and peace and heaven and all the things that we cannot buy in this world, this Christmas, be like a child, be like Mary, and get ready to receive. Amen. Peace be The peace of God which goes beyond our understanding. You will learn to keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith of Christ Jesus. Amen. We say the today.
Lord, be merciful to me and answer me.
It's again a, a briefer service, but we're going to be focusing on those five miracles of Christmas. Martin Luther had a really famous sermon back in the 1500s where he focused on the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1, and he picked out five specific miracles um, that, that took place during the brief Christmas that called that Matthew chapter 1 holds. We'll be focusing our attention on, on that this evening at, at uh, 10 o'clock p.m. And then tomorrow, we'll be going back to, to join us for worship um, at 9 o'clock. I know it's a, a strange week with Monday um, being Christmas Day. You're, you're off probably from work on Christmas Day, so you're welcome to join us for that service at 9 o'clock. That'll be the only service that we have tomorrow. No 7.30 or 9.45, just right in the middle at 9 o'clock. Um, join us for, for lots of, of uh, carols, familiar carols and uh, the Christmas Gospel, which is the best gospel of the year outside of Easter. So, uh, so you again, you're welcome to join us. The, the, the calendar for the remaining week is on the back side of the bulletin, so if you'd like to take that home with you and uh, you've got that for everything, please note that, uh, that we are not going to have a, a specific New Year's Day service. We typically have a New Year's Day service. Once in a while, we'll have a New Year's Eve service. Um, but uh, that focus will be brought in on the next Sunday. I'm all set up here. Um, next Sunday, the 31st, uh, we have the, the, the account of Simeon in the temple. And, and we've got a lot of, lot of uh, reminders of, of God's blessings and, and how God promises to bless us. Um, even through the rough times that we have in this life, and there are many in a sin plague world, um, but God's chief blessing still shines through, and that's what we'll focus on this Christmas. The announcements, other than that, you can read for yourselves. Please take a calendar for January. Um, a foreign price is out there. Um, anything else that might be out there is fair game, so please, on your way out, take that. Should we try to do right now, or should we wait? Uh, no, that's up Sunday school practice, right? Well, that doesn't start till 8.30. Should we wait till... Barb, what do you think? We have time to set up the call before? Please. Okay. Do it. If anybody has a strong back or would like to help just set up some chairs, um, we can use some chair setter uppers um, right after church, I guess. Um, otherwise, we'll have to do it right after the children's practice. But uh, um, if we could get it done now, that would be helpful. So that's all. God bless you. And, and look forward to seeing you.